everyone, it's Debbie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you're new here, I'm a reseller. I've been reselling for 17 years and I absolutely love it. But that does not mean that it does not come with some highs and lows. That's just part of the business. But there are a few things that I find are crucial to success and longevity in the business. And that is hard work, consistency, education, and research. And we are going to really tap into two of those areas today, being the education and research. I attended the Poshmark Search Hacks Education event, and it was packed full of great information. It was presentation style, the chat was on, but it was a prepared format where they were presenting information and there was a lot of great information. I started out with an attitude of, I already know all this, this is basic information. I know how to create a listing, my listings are good. But then I thought, no, I need to be open-minded and really listen to what they said. And the outcome of that was I learned a lot. I feel like there are some key things and changes that I can make to improve my listings, my discoverability, and I learned some great things about research that is really going to help me with sourcing things that are going to sell. So what I'm going to do is I took extensive notes. I have 27 pages of notes. So I'm going to go through, try to get as word for word as I possibly could. So I will let you know exactly what they said so that I do not change any of the content, add a little bit of my own opinions to that. And then at the very end, I'm going to let you know what I took from it and the changes that I am going to implement into my own business that I think are going to really help. They opened with a reminder saying, I wanted to give a quick reminder of our community guidelines. We ask that you all be kind and respectful. Let's build a positive and welcoming environment where everyone feels safe to share thoughts, ideas, and feedback. Please be supportive and respectful of individual opinions. We have a 0% tolerance for harassment. Do not attack, berate, bully, belittle, insult, harass, troll or swear at members or moderators. And I believe those are good rules to live by in any environment. That kind of behavior usually does not produce a productive result. So I was glad that they put that reminder in. And I noticed at the beginning of the chat, I wasn't able to read all of it because I was furiously taking notes, that I noticed there were a few negative comments at the very end and I stopped taking notes. I saw a lot of thank yous and kind positive remarks, which makes me really hopeful that Poshmark is listening to us. They're trying to provide more of what we're asking for. And in turn, ushers are receiving that information and their tone is changing also. They started with introductions. I really like the presenters. I thought they did an excellent job. Jasmine is in product marketing. She has been with Poshmark for almost a year, but has been using the platform since 2017. Natasha is in community development and has been with Poshmark for seven and a half years. First of all, they said they wanted to acknowledge the feedback from some of our sellers that are reporting a decrease in sales recently. This has been really concerning to hear, and we want you to know that our team is actively looking into it. We want to thank those of you that are sharing feedback consistently with us about what you are experiencing. Hear you, we hear it, and we are actively working to understand what's happening in cases where sellers are struggling. We want nothing more for everyone to thrive on Poshmark and we'll continue to listen, share examples of best practices and troubleshoot things that are not working. She then went on to say that today's conversation would not focus on recent search changes. We will use this time today to address other search related topics that you've told us that you want to know more about so that you can maximize sales and turn more shoppers into buyers, which is exactly what I have asked for. I have sent multiple messages saying, what can I do so that my items are safe? Overwhelmingly, I think that is what Poshmark sellers want to know. How can their items be seen that we want to make sales again? They created an agenda based on feedback that was shared with them on the most on the type of content that would be most valuable to us, including specific and actionable steps to drive more traffic to our listings. She said, we know you put a lot of time and effort into your listings and we want to help you get the most attention to those listings and convert that traffic into sales. She said, some of the information might not be new for all of you. 
but our goal is to help optimize your listings for search results, both on and off Poshmark. And I think they definitely did that. This includes equipping you with pointers so that your listings rank among the most relevant in search results and key takeaways from today's event will include how to leverage SEO to make your listings more discoverable, how to craft powerful listings that will actually do the marketing for you, ways you can gain exposure to your business through Poshmark Business Services, and how to think like a buyer and capitalize on current trends and search terms to help inform what to share or list next. Then they said there was a teaser to stick around to the end for their new search tool and how you can use it. She said, whether you have been a seller from the jump or you're more recently building your business, the same remains true. We are amidst a thrifting boom. Industry reports and our own sales data show that more shoppers are turning to online reselling platforms to buy secondhand to shop sustainable and unique one-of-a-kind items and support small business owners. In 2021 alone, the amount of buyers that came to Poshmark to shop as a destination increased 17% year over year. By 2025, the size of the U.S. secondhand apparel market is actually expected to more than double, and it is expected to grow 11 times faster than the apparel retail market. And I have read that in other reports also. So this is a great business to be in. She then said, you guys are here because you have created strong and growing businesses on Poshmark and we want you to be able to capitalize on this boom as much as possible. She then said, there are 5.6 billion Google searches per day. I had to look that up because I wasn't sure if she said billion or million. So I Googled that myself, how many Google searches there are per day. and. I received the result of 8.5 billion with a B. So either way, 5.6 billion or 8.5 billion, that is a lot of searches. She said that makes an average of three to four searches per person per day. She said, while we don't have all the secrets to Google's algorithm, we will go over some SEO tips and tricks that should be considered standard for posh ambassadors on and off the platform. I think posh ambassadors, Everyone, we do a lot behind the scenes to surface and market your listings to the world outside of Poshmark. We continue to invest really substantially in Google Shopping to bring shoppers to your closets. Our spendage to drive traffic has actually increased since last year, and that was also said in the fireside chat. Let's go over the basics. Google search results page, and they had a graph showing that there are the image searches, then there are the text searches, and then the organic searches. With so many selling platforms out there, these days the Google search results can significantly help or hinder. The results are constantly changing based on relevancy, but one thing remains the same, shopper intent. Since shoppers enter search queries in Google with something very specific in mind, they are more likely to make a purchase. And that is different from a TikTok or an Instagram where users might not be explicitly searching for something to purchase as the default action for that platform. So that's just saying when someone is going to Google, usually it's because they are looking for something to buy. They will put in a search for what they would like to purchase. When buyers come to Google search results page, there are three types of results that pop up had a graphic but I don't want to use theirs without permission so I did the same thing put that up on the side to show you the different categories there is the shopping ad and that's the one that I usually gravitate towards because it has the square photos with the picture and a few keywords I feel like those really grab attention because of the photos just under shopping ads Google will surface text ads for text ads Poshmark bids on search keywords writes ad copy and chooses the landing page. This means text ads are a bit more broad and click through to brand pages, trim pages, or category pages as opposed to a listing detail page. And then under that is organic results. And that is, she said exactly what they are, organic results. Poshmark creates web pages that match buyer browsing behavior and then monitors and optimizes it for SEO. And she said SEO stands for search engine optimization. And she said most of us know that the higher an organic search result surfaces on a user's page, the better optimized that listing is for SEO. 
You can also toggle to the shopping tab, which is listings only, and it populates a mix of free and organic listings. Now for the shopping ads. Shopping ads are highly visible, which I was just saying, that's what I seem to gravitate towards, I think because they're right there at the top and they have that photo. And they highlight the product's details to potential customers searching for products. Shopping ads are pinned to the top of the results page and if a user clicks on a Poshmark shopping ad, they will get taken directly to that listing details page. Poshmark manages shopping ads by creating shopping campaigns in the Google Merchant Center and they pay at a cost per click basis. Matching listings to these ads relies heavily on quality listing information. The product submitted contains details. Those details feed into Google search algorithm and helps Google surface listings to users based on relevancy, quality, and advertiser bid and they have on their title, category, and description. So those are key things that you want to put about the product. You'll want to optimize your product category and product type. These are both back-end attributes for paid that will not show to users, but will help your product appear in shopping search results. While category is required for shopping ads, optimizing product type is another opportunity to increase your relevancy. Product descriptions are also important, so you will want to make sure you include keywords and information about your product that are really relevant and accurate. Not only are the details pivotal to the algorithm, but some of them are also pinned to the ad and visible to users before they even click on the ad. So they can be enticing levers for a user who wants to click on your product. So this is important. These are tips to be seen on Google. So this is great information, whether you're a Poshmark seller, an eBay seller, Mercari, whatever your platform is, these are tips that try to help with discoverability on Google, which then leads them to the buying platform. I know what some of you are thinking, not every image has a white background. Some of them still are seen. However, don't you want to have the best odds? And if it gives you a little bit more of a chance to be seen, I would go ahead and use the white background. She said, now that we know what details pull into Google search results, here are some tips on how you can get your listings discovered using tools Poshmark has available, which are all free. Said so step number one, make sure that search visibility is enabled on your Poshmark listings. I hadn't even ever thought about this before. So I'm going to put on the side exactly where you check that option should be on. But if you want to verify that your listing is visible on Google, then she explained how to do that. You go to your account tab, scroll down to sharing settings, make sure it is toggled on where it shows search visibility. I checked mine, mine was on. You might just want to double check to make sure your search visibility for Google is on. She said, make sure your listings are considered for any search results on Google. She said, you can also use seller specified shipping to make your items pop on Google by editing your listings and choosing free as a discounted option. And if you do that, you'll just want to raise your overall price so that you are still making a profit, but it does have a banner that says free shipping if you offer free shipping. And some people really love that free shipping and that could cause them to click on it. So you have to decide that could be something that you might consider for more visibility. And she said a free shipping banner will appear on Google and further stand out from other shopping results. So maybe take that into consideration when you're figuring out how to price your items. If your item is new with tags, you can select yes in the listing flow and add a photo of the barcode so that it's more visible on Google. The GTIN is the Google trade item number. It uniquely identifies your product. So this specific number helps us make your ad or unpaid listing richer and easier for users to find. Products submitted without any unique product identifiers may not be eligible for all shopping programs or features. If you don't have it in there, she said, you might wanna go back and add it. Next, she said, to make your listings eligible for Google Shopping, your images have to adhere to best practices. She said a lot of these are fairly basic, but I did learn a few things that I'm going to make changes on. She said, you want to make sure that you accurately represent the product that you're selling, and there was a pop-up with do's and don'ts. The do's were clear view of the main product, take up 75 to 90% of the frame, accurately display the entire product in the main image. And this is one of the things I'm changing. I am guilty of 
maybe focusing on a graphic or the back pockets of the jeans or a particular element that I thought would bring people in. And that is true. It might bring them in if they're already on the platform. But as far as Google search, that is not optimal. So I'm going to, from here on out, make sure that my first photo is the entire image of the item and not focusing on a particular part of the item. She said, use well-lit, solid white or transparent backgrounds. I think we've been saying that for a little while. Make sure you use well-lit, solid white or transparent backgrounds. 15 plus images and a video, include an image of the tag, include accurate flaws, and shoot in a square mode. She said, do not use content that covers a product. So I've seen some people will put their logo across the front or something. That's not a good idea. Do not use a generic image or graphic or illustration. Make sure it is an actual product. Use an image with any type of border or, and the chat was over, I couldn't see what the or was, but I think the main point of it is make sure it is just the front of the item, the entire item and nothing else on there. She then went on to say listings with four or more photos are 30% more likely to sell. 13 or more are 50% more likely to sell and videos increase sell through rate by 18%. So more evidence that more photographs and a video are beneficial. She said, in addition, lighting quality is important. Most household light bulbs are cast a yellow light. Using a yellow bulb will have a negative impact, especially on denim. It will result in off-color images. And she said, if you're not willing to spend on a photo setup, she totally gets it. She said, one of the best things you can do is use natural light near a window and use your phone. Most phones will adjust for exposure even before they take the photo. I had a video on how to photograph and I tested different areas with different lighting, natural light outside, yellow light bulbs, my ring lamp, and then compared the photos. She said, or you can also invest in a good lighting system. It can be a simple as soft boxes of PVC photo backdrop and side panels. That's really enough to set up with a space to take consistent quality photos. And that is very nice if you have a consistent space like that. She said, take in square mode so you don't run into cropping issues since the photos are displayed in square mode. Next, she said to have a clean branded closet look and feel. Whether you use a mannequin, hanging, flat lay, or modeled photos, consistency is key. Whatever style you choose for the main image, make sure they are consistent closet wide, and that will really create a branded feel when a shopper arrives at your closet. Next, they moved on to discoverability on Poshmark which I feel is what I have really been wanting to know. How can I have my item seen? She said, we're going to walk through the key levers that are specific to Poshmark. While we continue to optimize search, our goal remains constant. We want to connect shoppers to the most relevant inventory to their searchers and reward sellers for the direct effort that they put into marketing and crafting quality listings. We want to reward them with an increase in visibility and an increase in sales. We encourage you to continue leveraging the power of sharing as a top free marketing tactic. Sharing is key. It is the ingredient to boosting your listing in search results. She said that it leads to an increase in sales and it is also important for community connection. We suggest using calendars and reminders and building a habit to share regularly. There was a pop-up that said self-sharing. Sellers who self-share one to two times a day have a 25% lift in sell-through rate. Also said bulk sharing is over two times faster than sharing individually, cutting the time by over 50%. Then she went on to clarify what they consider as sell-through rates. She said sell-through rates are the chances of making a sell in a one-week time frame. Small but frequent efforts will actualize into real results. She then went on to talk a little bit more about sharing in bulk. She said, what's better than sharing one item? It is sharing in bulk that you can save time and it's an efficient way to keep your listings at the top of search results, brand pages, and feeds ultimately promoting more followers to your closet. Bulk share to parties 
which allows you to reach a large number of more motivated shoppers all at once. You can bulk share on your phone or on the computer. And that's one thing that I have kind of pulled back on was sharing to parties. So that's something that I need to implement too because right there she is saying it allows you to reach a large number of motivated shoppers. So I'm going to implement party sharing a little bit more often. Then a posh fact that they popped up on the side was descriptions with more than 100 characters or 20 to 25 words have 40% higher sell-through rates. That answers the question that I feel so many people have been asking. Short titles or long titles? And everything in here led me to believe the long, rich titles are crucial. Nowhere did they ever say to have a short title. Everything that they said today pointed to having rich titles and descriptions and not the short title. So I think that question has definitely been answered. Another posh fact that they popped up said, a listing with brand mentioned is two times as likely to sell than a listing with no brand mentioned. I can't believe that was only two times. I would think that would be like a hundred times more likely. I thought brand would be a much bigger driver, but they said only two times, but still be sure you put the brand. The next topic was don't forget to take advantage of plot closet management tools such as My Closet Insight and My Inventory Report. She said, these are great tools to keep track of all of your inventory in one place. When in My Inventory Report, pay special attention to number of days listed column. If any item is over 90 days old, it might be a good time to give your listing, and I couldn't tell what she said, it sounded like glow up or share it again. So it could have been glow up, blow up, something. What I got from that was look at that item and what can you do to make it better if it's over 90 days old. She then said, now that we have anchored sharing as our top visibility driver, and I'll pause right there because once again, they are saying how important sharing is and actually named it as our top visibility driver. She said, let's chat about how to create and craft powerful listings that actually do the marketing for you. She said, similar to Google, the more prescriptive you are, the better. Attributes like title, descriptions, style tags, keywords, character counts, and subcategories are all pieces of data that feed into the search engine. First and foremost, leverage a strong title and description to help your items get discovered. So again, not short titles, strong descriptive titles. Be specific and explicative. Include key components like brand, manufacturer style number, and official name if available. You can find the official name by finding it on the back of tags and putting it into Google. We've talked about that many times. If there's a style number, it is great to look it up. Also put the style name. And one thing that I rely on heavily is Google image search. If I cannot find a style number or a name, Often I can find that by just doing a Google image search. Google image search is my best friend. If you have not used Google image search, it is a game changer. I have a couple videos on how to use it. She said, be sure you fill in both category and subcategory. Match the size to the gender. Select the dominant color first. Add style tags directly onto the listing to make it easier for the buyer to find them. They also recommended keeping description templates safe. She said you can use Microsoft Word, Excel, or better yet, bulk upload templates to copy and paste into a future listing to save time. She says basically pre-populated Excel template. You use it to create and edit multiple listings at once. I am not familiar with bulk upload templates, so I'm going to look more into that. She said, do market research to make sure your pricing strategy is in line with similar items. Prices vary as styles go in and out. Definitely, I think that is absolutely key. You want to look at what is currently out there, what your competition is, and compare that to what has sold. Use that to know whether to purchase items to resell and how to price them. Be sure to include the original price as they have a 35% higher sell-through rate. Okay, that was a key takeaway from me. So often when you're listing and asks you for the original price, if I'm not absolutely sure, I put zero. But a 35% increase, I am going to fill that in from now on. And if I don't know exactly, I am just going to try to get as close as I can to that it's because I think you can kind of estimate pretty closely. She then said, now we have gone over how to attract customers to your closet. 
So now that they're there, what do you do? She said, closet search is a great way to ensure they have a good experience at your closet from the jump. She said, engagement and clienteling can really set you apart and keep customers coming back. She said brick and mortar retail spaces allows a customer to go to a salesperson and ask about styles, colors, sizes, shape, fit. So they tried to create a tool that could replicate that as closely as possible. If you click on the little search icon in a person's closet, you can insert keywords to find and share listings quickly. It helps sellers with large closets to promote and manage their listings. And one way that I use that, I had someone the other day that said, hey, I like this swimsuit top, but I need a pair of size medium bottoms. What do you recommend? So I can tell her, go to my closet, hit search and medium. She said, I don't know how to do that. So I said, okay, what I'll do is I will share them all to the top of my closet. In the next 30 minutes, all my medium swim bottoms will be shown first. So I was able to go into my own closet, put medium swim bottoms and quickly shared those items. They were at the top of my page and she was able to see those items. She didn't end up buying them, but that's okay. The next person might. And sharing was not in vain because sharing, as they said, is the most powerful tool. So I was sharing that item, not just for her benefit, but for overall benefit as well. The next area was to think like a buyer. She said, placing yourself in the shoes of a potential buyer and other potential shopping habits, including shopping trends with a well-constructed closet will increase Poshmark sales in culmination with our Poshmark selling tips. Now we are going to shift the conversation to a more buyer-centered approach. She said, trends are constantly evolving. Google offers some really awesome and really free ways to check what is selling in search. And this might be the area that I got the most out of and I'm really excited about. You can engage with what's trending and then apply those to your listing. She said, Google Trends is a forecasting tool that helps you capture trending search terms and then leverage them for your business. You can search any term on Google Trends to find out macro level interest over time based on user search of location, time frame, categories, and platforms. Use Google Trends to do some general related research on items you plan to list next. I had never been to Google Trends. I went in there, I started searching all kinds of things. It was so neat to see. And you can see the trends and you can do 30 days or 90 days or four years or since 2004. And it is so neat to look at. It is so neat to look at. And they, she gave an example of a trucker hat. When paired with Stetson, the topic is up 180%. Queries are up 400%. So she knew now is a good time to list that item. Also tells you look out for those items because those items are trending. You can also use Google Trends to compare styles and see what is picking up versus slowing down. She used an example with jeans. That seems to always be changing. She said in April of 2021, boyfriend jeans were more popular than straight leg jeans, but straight leg jeans have taken off since last August. And when you look at straight leg jeans, they will be a key trend to lean into if you have any in your closet or when out sourcing. It is a great way to map out and prioritize your next set of listings. I am definitely going to use that. You can also use Poshmark to trend spot what buyers want within the ecosystem. And I guess they're saying the ecosystem of Poshmark. So you can look within Poshmark. She said, our merch team curates today's trends using a blend of sales data and trend forecasting. They look at things like brands, categories, colors, conditions, style tags, keywords, and combines them with industry level macro trends to create theme shoppable moments backed by actual user data. You want to list in line with top trends and position your listings for better discoverability. She then talked about trend guidelines, which was new to me and sounds really great. She said it is individual trend page you can now tap on to view details. She said this is seller gold that tells you what what filters and attributes make up that tag. And she gave an example and it had different keywords and style tags and colors and lots of information. I 
spent a long time trying to find where to find these trend guidelines and I could not find it anywhere. So if anybody knows where to find it, please let me know. I found emails. I get an email each day and there was one that said bandage dresses were in. And so I clicked on that and I could see some of that information. And then when I went to my news feed, I find today's trend. And one example was it said, it said, workwear staples and it had different images underneath. One of them was Dickie's work jackets. One of them was chambray button shirts. And I clicked on the Dickie's work jackets. It gave just a few pieces of information, not much at all. Like in the example, it gave one keyword Eisenhower. So I am looking for what they were showing where it gives a lot of information and style tags and keywords. I think that is great. So if anybody knows how to locate this, I cannot find it other than what I found in the newsfeed, but it, the information that I got when I clicked on those was very limited. They said the trend guidelines shows brands, categories, subcategories, search terms, style tags, and keywords. So I think this can be very beneficial. She said she wanted to take a moment to spotlight the benefit of style tags. She said, these are the pillar of trend creation. Using style tags will give your listings a chance to show up in trend emails, which I get those emails every day. I'm going to start looking at them every day. And today's trends on Poshmark, which is what I said I saw in the news feed. She said, just as you use style tags to build powerful listings, you can also use them to market your listings. Do this by checking out some of the guidelines from today's trends. So I'm going to start looking at that every day. Identify if there are any style tags and use those in your listings. Go back and edit existing listings with those trending style tags. Then they were super excited about a sneak peek of something that is coming soon. It is a new search optimization, My Saved Searches which is something if you're an eBay seller, we already have that on eBay and I do really like that feature. So I'm excited that Poshmark is having it. She said it will only be available on mobile and it allows you to save a filtered search. You will receive daily notifications via email, push or newsfeed with the latest search results that are posted that match your search. She showed some mocks, but she said they might change. And the great thing about this, someone can go on and maybe they are searching for something specific. So say I have a pair of jeans that is no longer sold, but I really want these jeans. I can do a saved search for that brand, style, and size. If anybody lists that item, I'm going to be notified that that item has been listed. And I have seen that happen on eBay time and time again. I will list something and immediately sells. And I think, oh, they must have had that as their saved search. It sends your listing directly to an already interested buyer who has already shown purchase intent. It can also help you stay on top of market research, keep tabs on new listings that are similar to what is in your closet. So say I have a specific thing that I'm really wanting to sell. I can do a safe search and see how my competitors are listing those items, what they're pricing it at, how they're taking pictures, what their description is like. So maybe if I have it listed for a hundred and they come in and list it for 95, I can say, oh, I better drop mine to $90 so that I'll have a little bit of an edge. You can really use that to improve your listings and make sure you have an edge on competitors. She said you can also use it similar to pricing strategies around comparables. You can get ahead by using safe searches to your advantage, get notified daily of similar items are listed and see how they're pricing, selling, and describing. And that is how they concluded the search hacks presentation. She said that their goal for the day was to provide us with actual insights into how you can grow your business. She said they would again send out a post event survey. And I wanted to let you know on the fireside chat, I read every comment and I took what everybody said in the comments and used that to form my post event survey. And I will do that again. If you want to comment about anything that was helpful or what you want to see in the future, take all that and put that in my post event survey. I thought it was a great session and it provided a lot of very useful information on discoverability of your items. It does not solve the problem if you are put into a testing group and somehow your items aren't seen. I am hoping that that ends soon. They figure out their algorithm and it all goes back to normal for everyone. But 
Say you're on a fair playing field. These are excellent tips for making your item the best that you can. The takeaways that I have, I am going to definitely learn a lot more about Google Trends. I am going to use that so that I can source better, so that I have items that will sell that are in demand that people are looking for. I'm going to take the top queries and search keywords, and I'm going to use those as style tags and keywords in my listings. I'm also going to learn more about Poshmark trends. I'm going to start checking those trends every day, and I will also use that so that I will source quality items. I'm going to do better on the first photo of my image. I'm going to make sure that I don't do any collages. It's going to be the item that I am selling, the front view with nothing else added in. Yesterday, I was listing swimsuits, and I put a picture of the front of it, a picture of the back of it, and then I put words to say the top size and the bottom size because I thought that will give everybody a quick visual to see what the size is. Well, that was wrong. I'm gonna go through and I need to change it to just the image of the actual item with a white background because I want it seen on Google because that is going to give me a lot of visibility if it's seen on Google. When I am listing, I'm going to put in the original price. Even if I don't know it, I'm going to put my best estimation to give myself a 30% higher chance of selling. I am going to try to be sure and add 13 plus photographs and if it's a valuable enough item add a video felt like they gave a lot of great information now even if i do everything they say if the algorithm is off my item still not may not be seen my cells are still down so again i go back to do not put all of your eggs in one basket diversify have items on other platforms i just put out a video i tried a new cross listing service called prime lister and i love them it makes cross listing really easy they have a free trial you can try them for seven days and cross list up to a hundred items for free to see if you like it so you don't put a credit card in no obligation so that gives you a great opportunity to try it out if you so wish to and see if you think cross-listing would be beneficial for you for me i think it's key so that is everything that i have for you today thank you so much for watching and everybody have a great day bye